Just minutes ago, waves towering up to 22 feet crashed against California's coast, not in a single spot, but along miles of fragile bluffs. That alone is not rare. This time, repeated impacts and saturated ground are exposing weaknesses even experts did not expect to unravel so quickly. Is California's iconic edge just facing another storm surge? Or are we watching a warning sign in real time? Wave buoys off the California coast are reporting heights up to 22 feet, with some swells carrying energy for more than 15 seconds before crashing ashore. These are not just isolated peaks. National Weather Service advisories stretch from Sonoma to Monterey, warning of a pattern where powerful waves arrive in sets, hammering the same stretches of coastline again and again. The impact does not stop at the waterline. Recent rainfall has left cliff soils saturated, primed to absorb even more force as each wave strikes. High tides are pushing water further inland, so the reach of these waves extends beyond the usual winter surf zone. At the San Francisco Presidio tide gauge, water levels have surged up to four feet above normal, amplifying the effect of every incoming swell. According to one National Weather Service forecaster, it is not just the size of the waves, it is how often they are hitting and how much water is already in the ground. Authorities are tracking these conditions closely, using buoy data and tide charts to monitor the repeated stress on the coast. The concern is not one wave, it is repeated impact. As these forces combine, the coastline is facing a level of pressure that is both measurable and escalating. The numbers tell the story. High surf, long periods, and saturated ground are now working together, setting the stage for what happens next. California's coastline is defined by miles of soft sedimentary bluffs, layers of sandstone, silt, and clay built up over thousands of years. When powerful waves arrive, the force is focused at the base, the toe of these cliffs. Each surge carves away material at the base. Over time, that undercutting creates overhangs that grow more unstable with every set. Water from recent storms does not just run off the surface. It soaks deep into the bluffs, filling tiny cracks and pores. As the soil becomes saturated, its strength drops and gravity begins to pull weakened layers downward. The combination of relentless wave undercutting and water infiltration produces conditions for sudden failure. Infrastructure sits close to the edge in many places. Roads like Highway 1 and Big Sur run just feet from active slides. At Regent Slide, crews recently finished stabilizing the slope after years of closures and detours. The repair, completed on January 10, 2026, used more than 4,600 steel rods drilled up to 60 feet into the hillside. The new roadbed now sits slightly inland, away from the most unstable ground. A USGS geomorphologist explains, when waves chip away at the base and water weakens the core, even small shifts can trigger large movements. Across the coast, these mechanics are under close watch as repeated impacts continue. Across California's coastline, a network of sensors works around the clock. GNSS stations, global navigation satellite systems, track ground movement down to millimeters, recording subtle shifts that can signal the earliest stages of instability. Tilt meters anchored into the bluffs detect changes in slope angle, alerting scientists to movement that might go unnoticed by the naked eye. Offshore, buoy 46042 floats west of Monterey Bay, relaying real-time data on wave height, period, and direction. During recent storms, this buoy registered spectral peaks matching the most powerful swells, confirming what coastal cameras captured, repeated, high-energy impacts on the same vulnerable cliffs. The U.S. Geological Survey and NOAA integrate these streams into daily assessments. When GNSS readings show displacement above normal background noise or tilt meters record a sudden change, those signals trigger closer scrutiny. Caltrans, responsible for highways skirting the bluffs, uses these alerts to guide inspection teams. Protocols call for visual checks and, if thresholds are crossed, temporary road closures or barriers. But there are limits. Data gaps exist along stretches of the coast where sensors are sparse, and heavy surf can sometimes mask smaller, slower movements in the ground. As one U.S. Geological Survey scientist explains, we rely on a chain of evidence. No single sensor tells the whole story. 
it is the pattern across multiple instruments that raises concern. The goal is not to predict the exact moment of failure, but to give agencies the best possible information for timely decisions. In this developing situation, confidence in action comes from the convergence of independent measurements, not from any one dramatic spike. Highway 1 at Half Moon Bay was closed for several hours on January 3rd after waves pushed seawater over the road, stranding vehicles and forcing emergency crews to redirect traffic inland. In Pacifica, debris washed over the seawall and scattered across Beach Boulevard, prompting city workers to put up temporary barriers and warning signs. These closures do not stretch for miles, but they create real disruptions for people trying to get to work, school, or even just the grocery store. A spokesperson from the San Mateo County Office of Emergency Services explained, We are monitoring the most vulnerable stretches hour by hour. Some areas are seeing repeated impacts, while others remain untouched. The risk is not the same everywhere, and conditions can change in a single tide. For residents living near the bluffs, each high tide brings a new round of uncertainty. One local standing behind a row of sandbags described the tension. They said, we watch the water come closer every night. It is not just about losing the view. It is about not knowing if the road will be open or if we will have to leave. Along the Mendocino coast, county crews have posted signs warning of sneaker waves and sudden beach closures, especially where logs and debris can be swept inland without warning. These targeted actions reflect the uneven nature of the threat. Most of the coast remains stable for now, but pockets of instability force quick decisions, sometimes with only a few hours notice. For many communities, daily routines now depend on the latest advisory, with local agencies balancing public access against the need for safety. The pattern is clear. The coastline's response is as varied as the forces acting upon it. Local closures and temporary barriers are not a single continuous line of damage. They are focused, precautionary steps taken where needed, and they are changing as the waves and tides continue to play out. Monitoring data points to three plausible paths in the days ahead. If wave energy drops and tides return to normal, some of the most stressed cliffs could temporarily stabilize. That could allow agencies to reopen closed roads and ease restrictions while the underlying vulnerabilities would remain. If the current pattern of repeated powerful swells continues, more localized failures may develop, especially where saturated soils and recent undercutting overlap. In those pockets, authorities could extend or expand closures and respond to fresh cracks or slumping ground as they appear. The most concerning scenario is another strong storm system arriving during a period of high tides. If that happens, Rapid erosion could occur in isolated areas, leading to sudden changes in bluff shape or partial collapses. Scientists emphasize that no single indicator, wave height, rainfall, or ground movement offers a complete picture. Decisions will depend on how these factors combine, and agencies are ready to act if warning signs intensify. California's history. With powerful Pacific waves stretches far beyond this season, in 1983, during a major El Nino, the Point Arena buoy recorded waves topping 25 feet with energy lasting 18 seconds, numbers nearly identical to what is being measured now. That year, bluffs crumbled and beaches vanished in places that had seemed stable for decades. Today, the same buoy is again reporting significant wave heights near 25 feet with long periods that transfer more force onto the coast. Scientists are comparing these readings to past events looking for patterns that might signal broader risks. The recent update to the USGS Coastal Storm Modeling System, called COESMOAS, now covers the entire state, allowing agencies to map which stretches of shoreline face the greatest hazard under different conditions. As one coastal geomorphologist notes, we are not just watching for the next collapse, we are using decades of data to understand how these impacts add up over time. This approach shifts the focus from isolated incidents to a statewide view, where today's warnings echo the lessons of the past. Right now, California's coast is changing in real time, under the watch of scientists, communities, and the ocean itself. With every high tide and surge, the line between land and sea is being redrawn. The question is not if, but how quickly we will adapt. Stay aware, stay connected, if you live near the coast, report what you observe. 